In this tutorial, what we're going to do is show you how to um, get Wrangler started using Emacs. So we start off by launching Emacs. We're here we're using Aquamax, which is a binding of Emacs for the Mac. And what we'll do is open some files that we've recently looked at, c.l and s.l. Now we when we have a, 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 an Erlang file loaded, we can launch Wrangler, and we do that by typing Control C, Control R. In the Mac version, we're then prompted as to whether we have a there's a running process. Um, we press yes, and you can see now that Wrangler has started because there are two now two more menus in the um, menu bar. There's a refactoring menu and an inspector menu. What we're going to do is, is other tutorials will cover the details of this. What we'll do here is just show one refactoring and see how that works with the system. But before we do that we're going to go down to the bottom of the menu and click Customize Wrangler. And what this does is set a number of settings which are valuable for, um, for refactoring. In particular the way that e Emacs can become aware of the the project directories for a particular project is for you to uh, put into Wrangler a number of search paths. And here you can see that we use this configuration here. We can delete a directory, for example. Um, we can insert a directory, so we might have users Simon Thompson desktop small. Um, we could add more directories if we wish, but those are the directories in which the Erlang files for the particular project we ref we're refactoring live. We have to specify this because um, if we're renaming a function, for example, then we will have to rename all the calls to that function and they may live in other modules in the project. We can save that for the current session by clicking on Save, and click Yes, and then we can exit. So we've said that's the scope of the directory. And let's have a look at the, the uh, particular example. We've got two files here, one called s.erl, one called c.erl. What we'll do here is, is we'll aim to rename one of the um, functions in the module. So we, we make sure the cursor is, is on the, um, the name of the function, function called l here, and we'll select rename function name. We're prompted at the foot of the window for a new name. Let's call it loop. And you see that at the first time you perform a refactoring, this lower window appears. And right at the bottom, we're, our, we're given three choices. We can preview a, a refactoring, so see the changes that it will make. We can commit the refactoring, we can actually do the changes, or we can cancel. Let's for the moment press commit. There we are, and what you see here is that the name of the function has changed in the um, function header. The call has changed in the recursive call. The use of the function inside a spawn has changed, and also it's changed in the export list. Now suppose we, we have second thoughts. What we can always do for any refactoring is undo. And what I'm going to do is we're prompted, we're reminded that it undoes to the point at which the refactoring was performed, so any subsequent edits are lost. We say yes, click that and then it returns to the state it was in before. So you've seen a simple example of configuring Wrangler, you've seen a simple refactoring in, in practice, you've seen how we can undo a refactoring once we've performed it. One last thing I wanted to show you, just to prepare for the next tutorial, is to show you that we can, um, I'm going to put keep have the diagnostic window separate, so I'm going to show that buffer in a new frame, and I'm going to close this buffer here. So the screen from now on will look like this. Our Erlang files will be in one window and we'll have a diagnostic output window separate from that. Okay.